Okay, so welcome back. This is episode number 42 of Happy Hour with Heather and Guest. Heather and I are uh, using some new software today, so hopefully this will be a, uh, a better recording than the, the previous few we've had. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. Today we're going to talk about a band who Heather had initially wanted to discuss when we were first coming up with the format for this new show. Uh, Red Cloud was a band that she had put on the list. Um, so we're finally getting to Red Cloud. Uh, and then we we sort of flipped it. I suggested Red Cloud to be the band. So Heather selected the tracks. And uh, so, yeah, so we're going to talk about Red Cloud. Uh, we're going to talk about um, Electric Demons. And then a band called Swamp Lords with a Z. Or... Uh, as my Canadian friends would say, with a Z. So, kicking things off, Red Cloud from uh, Eugene, Oregon. And I know that Red Cloud was a Native American uh, chief, I think, at some point. Um, other than that, I don't really have much to add unless you have anything you want to describe about the group. Uh, I, I did kind of, um, when I, when we get into the songs, I have, a I have okay. a few things before, before we get into the albums that we're going to discuss, I did see on Bandcamp that they have a, uh, either a single or an EP and it's titled blown up, sir, which I know is from the movie stripes. So that was really nice for me to be able to recognize that they were they have an album that that's a quotation from the movie Stripes when Bill Murray and his crew are performing and they ask the the commander asks what happened to Sergeant Hulka, their sergeant, and Bill Murray says, blown up, sir. <laughs> and then you find out, yes, these are Sergeant Hulka's men. He was injured during a training exercise. So... Anyway, I just, you know, I, I, I take every opportunity I can when there's a pop culture reference. <laughs> but uh, kicking things off, we're going to start off with an EP called The Cloud Sound. And the first track is called Know It. Yeah. And this music is more on the alternative rock side of the spectrum. Also has some desert rocking, you know, stoner jams. The guitar in this is really cool. That's really what I liked most about it. I like how the name of the band is an homage to the Lakota Chief Red Cloud. They also say on their Bandcamp page, they're taking us on an incredible Jules Verne inspired journey. Yes, I'm glad. I, so I'm glad that you're you're filling it in as we talk about the tracks. <laughs> Um, I said for the first track, Know It, I I felt like the beginning of it was like uh, when the Ghostbusters put on their proton packs for the first time and charge them up. And it's like a you know, nuclear energy being, being charged. Um, and then the riff builds like a roller coaster about to go off the point of no return on the first drop. Uh, and yeah, I felt it was, the song was really like stripped down stoner blues with, uh, and they were toying with the desert sound that you would find from bands like Caius, uh, you know, or Fatso Jetson or any of the bands sort of from the desert scene. I felt like they were kind of toying with that sound. Uh, and then the next track was, uh, What If Wonderland. Yeah, I thought this song was really catchy. It's really upbeat. You can't help but to tap your toes, tap your fingers, nod your head. <laughs> um, maybe even get up and do a little dance. I saw um, one of their tags on their Bandcamp page was Stoner Pop. I hadn't seen that tag before, but I think it fits really well, especially this song. It has a pop tempo. And the song is shorter with a faster beat to it. Yeah, this, I, I, the first thing I wrote was tone on a riff. I have no idea what that means. Sometimes I'll write stuff that I think is really 
profound at the time. And then I'll I'll read it out loud while we're doing this, and I'll have no idea what I was talking about. So tone on a riff. There you go. It's like stream of consciousness. <laughs> it, absolutely. Um, this I, I feel like this stays within the stoner framework, but there's kind of a surreal psychedelia that's involved, but not like like we've listened to some psychedelic songs where it feels like you're floating, like you know it's that sort of this is like straight up stoner, but it's, it's like surreal stoner. So it's not the floaty kind of psychedelics. And I know, I'm pretty sure that there's probably a more technical term for that, but I'm sticking with floaty. So it's not the floaty type, but it's the stoner type. Uh, so yeah, so then that does it for the clouds sound EP. And it brings us to Ursa minor. And the first track was called Milo. I noticed right off the bat that this is heavier. It's also slower paced. The guitar is really front and center and drives the sound. There's a really nice clarity to the vocals. It's good on its own without the need for effects or frills. Just honest, straight up rock and roll. Yeah, this one was interesting because there was slide guitar, which I hadn't really heard in stoner jams before uh so stoner slide and some more blues uh and i said this is like what would be playing in a film for a motorcycle riding through the desert between california and nevada like just really great epic visuals of a, mo a lone motorcycle just going through the desert kicking up sand while this track played in the background that's so if you're out there and you're looking for that specificity in terms of your music, then check out Milo on Ursa Minor. Uh, and then the next track was Ghost Dance. Yeah, what I noticed most in this song was the drumming. It's very rhythmic, tribal sounding. The Ghost Dance is a, a Native American dance. It has a really interesting history. And in Native American culture, drums are used to communicate with and call spirits and guides. And also towards the end of the song, the, the guitar is just awesome. Yeah, so the last uh, episode we did, I talked about, uh, I think I said non-traditional drumming, because I couldn't think of, so irregular time signatures. That's that's the technical term that I was going for. So this song I really enjoyed had an irregular drumming, like an irregular time signature to it, which was really cool. Um, I felt like they were going back to stoner framework, but it was really hard to pinpoint. That's one of the things I like about a lot of these bands is you, they're not cookie cutter. Like you can't fit them neatly in one category. Um, and then this one finally becomes a spacey floaty psychedelic jam towards the end. So they're covering all their bases. And that was uh Oh no, I'm sorry. We had one more track, Smoke Screen. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the structure of this song was really interesting. There's a guitar lick, then drums, then a pause, then the uh vocals, and then it repeats. I don't know why but pauses in songs just get my attention um, maybe that's the purpose of them <laughs> maybe that's what it's meant to do but i i always seem to be drawn to music that has these starts and stops and you know it makes them really interesting to me yeah well you don't you know you don't uh you don't expect it so it's like a nice it breaks it up a little bit i remember um one of my favorite authors when I was in graduate school was this guy, David Foster Wallace, who incorporated footnotes in his writing. And he said that the footnotes were sort of a way to break up the, the rhythm a little bit so that you wouldn't, you know, I, 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 he, he said it much more articulately than I can, but uh, he, he wanted to break up the rhythm. Um, smoke screen. I think I, I wrote my other favorite, so I guess I'd had a previous favorite as we were listening to these tracks. 
Um, but this one, I felt like we were entering doom. Like this was this was the most straight up doom sounding track that they'd had. Um, begins with fuzz and then it evolves into a sick riff with another odd time signature. So I really like the fact that they're they're not progressive by any stretch. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't put them in that category, but I like the fact that they're doing irregular drum beats and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, okay, so that's the end of Ursa Minor. Smokescreen was probably my favorite so far, based on what I what I had written. Um, and then we have their final album, Ruby Armada, Volume One, and the first track is called "Walk Away." Yeah, I really like this song. I think this is um, my favorite. <laughs> I, I just love the guitar and the vocals have a lot of emotion in them. The song is on the heavier side too, which I really like. The guitar is crunchier. The drums with the crash cymbals is pretty phenomenal too. Um, that heavy crashing sound, it's, it's just awesome. Yeah, this time I said they went back to a bluesy stoner. Like they sort of, they they had been doing more psychedelic stuff previously and now at least with the tracks we'd been listening to. Now they went back to more of a bluesy. I felt like this was the equivalent to, so there are a lot of uh, movies that incorporate what's known as the hero's journey storytelling model. Um, the Matrix, Star Wars movies. It's like, it, there's like a formula for the hero, you know, the Hobbit, for example. The hero starts out in their world, then they meet a mentor, then they leave the world and go on a journey. And then when they come back, they're, you know, different than they were before. There's much more to it. Uh, but I said that this was the sonic equivalent of the hero's journey, this track. I was like, walk away. The hero has received some training and he's now going out to get revenge against who's ever wronged him or her um, or them, you know, however you want to roll. But someone's going down. That's what I that's what I got from this song. So that's a great it was a great jam. And then the next track was called Number. Yeah, um, I wanted I wanted to include this song because I noticed it came up a few times in their discography. Uh, when the vocal harmony comes in, I wanted to share the lyrics because they seem important. Um, forever now, forever more. When it's deep, you hit the floor. Always remember that your number could come up. Take a look at your bad self before someone else. Always remember that you're blessed to walk this earth. Good mother's graces have given you your worth. It's so interesting because I also analyze the lyrics for this song, but different lyrics. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, yeah, I said that this, this track reminded me of a slower, uh, this reminded me of the song Gardenia by Caius a little bit, just in terms of the tone. And it's, it's obviously a, a different riff, but it reminded me of that, um, the, the same sort of tone and sound that they go for in the beginning. So I think they're really embracing more of the stoner metal aspects with this particular track. Um, and then uh, it returns to a spacey psychedelic feel. And the lyrics that I, I was drawn to were, are you afraid of what you'll find? When will you free your clouded mind? That was, I was like, oh yeah, I'm totally going to do that. <laughs> so. uh, okay, so that was, uh, that was number. And then we've got a final track called Blue Skyle, Blue Skyles. Blue Skies, but it's spelled B-L-E-U, like the French, the French way. Yeah. I thought this song was an interesting mix of grunge, grunge and alternative. It kind of reminded me of some of the 90s era bands, besides current bands that I really like. Uh, most of my favorite bands do come from the 90s. Yeah, this one I said was driven by the drums. I really felt like the drums propelled, propelled. Why can't I? The drums propelled this song. I remember once listening to uh, Matt Pike talk about the song Dope Smoker. 
and he said this the song was really driven by the drums and i remember thinking wow okay i'll i may never use that but if i use that i'm gonna listen for songs in which i think it's driven but so this one i felt was driven by the drums um and uh i yeah this was the most straightforward rock and roll song like none of it you know it, it didn't lean towards psychedelia or stoner or i was like this is straight up hard rock that's what i felt um but yeah definitely thumbs up for red cloud i would definitely i'm definitely going to be listening to them again and i would recommend all of you do so as well Uh, and then that's going to bring us to the Electric Demons, who are a stoner rock band from, I believe it's Regensburg, Germany. And we listened to an EP called Black Desert Queen. Yeah. First, the album art is really cool. It's this purple motorcycle with the stars behind it and a person or maybe a spirit riding the motorcycle with really wild hair. <laughs> if you saw, you'd think that they were the coolest person ever. I, I really like the intro and then the song Black Desert Queen, which is also the name of the album. I always like it when there's a song on the album that's the same as the title, <laughs> the title of the album. Also, the song Osiris, um, that's an Egyptian deity, the god of the underworld, death, resurrection, and the cycle of the Nile floods that Egypt relied on for agricultural fertility. The EP is just under 30 minutes and would be a great record to play for someone to introduce them to stoner, the stoner doom genre. Really pleasant vocals, awesome tone on the guitar, and a bit of a classic feel. Yeah, from on their band, I, I noted, I like to note that what they say on Bandcamp, like what the band has written. So they said they have a slight touch of occultism. Their songs cast you into a hellish realm of devilish drugs, gods of old, and life itself, and the princess of the night. This is just the beginning. So I couldn't agree with them more. There's great tone, great riffs, great vocals. This was another band that I was glad to discover. Uh, I think they may have actually reached out at one point um, on social media. But uh, anytime I listen to a contemporary band that I can earmark for future, like, oh, they're going to keep making records and I can listen to more of their music. That's awesome. So, is that, is that one of the dogs? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Electric Demons, uh, definitely worth checking out. It is a sh it's a short EP, but as Heather mentioned, I definitely agree. It's like a perfect uh, example record to play for somebody to introduce them to quality stoner music or doom. Quality stoner doom. Yeah. Uh, and then the final band was Swamp Lords with a Z. Uh, and the EP is called The Last in Line uh, slash The Manipulated Man. And they're from France. And um, The Last in Line, when I saw the title of the song, I thought it might be a Dio cover. <laughs> it is not. This is heavy. <laughs> Very low and sludgy. It has so much fuzz on it. It sounds drony. I like that it has clean vocals. The music is nasty, filthy, dirty. I felt like I needed to take a shower after listening to it. Now that's some amazing sludge. That, may, <laughs> that makes you feel like that. And then the manipulation. <laughs> Then the manipulate. I had man manipulated mind. Did I write that down wrong? Uh, oh, no, you're right. It is manipulated mind. Okay. It's like, what is the tuning on the guitar? It's so low. It sounds like it's coming from the depths of hell. I looked them up on Facebook, and these are some burly dudes. Burly dudes making man music. Can you hear the testosterone? 
I cut the sleeves off my t-shirts and threw some weights around. This needs to be blasted on the speakers at the gym. Let's listen to this and fuck some shit up. Like, you know that scene in office space? Let's just, let's destroy some office equipment. <laughs> yeah. So I, I will say this for the members of Swamp Lords. If you're looking for a pull quote, you can have, let's listen to this and fuck some, fuck some shit up. Heather from Happy Hour with Heather and Guest. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, this was one of those, this was a, a like a fortunate YouTube uh, algorithm thing where I was like spelunking through YouTube <laughs> looking for stuff to listen to. And this was like just there. It was like, oh, Swamp Lords. That sounds, that's like, draw, you know, I remember once somebody talking about the power of a, a book cover being able to entice you to read it just because of how awesome the cover is. And this was a similar thing where it was like, oh, Swamp Lords, that's begging me to listen to it. And then, yeah, the first thing I thought was, oh, my goodness, the tone on this is like supernatural. Um, And yeah, I remember uh, I just came up with I just wrote heavy, a lot of metaphors about how heavy. So (laughs) I'm not going to waste your time with metaphors or similes about how heavy it was, but just take both Heather and my word for it, that this stuff is up there with some of the heaviest stuff I've heard in a long time. Yeah. Um, And then after I listened to The Manipulated Man, mine, sorry, I don't know why I keep writing man, The Manipulated Mind, I was ready to go out and like join Fight Club (laughs) and like do Project Mayhem or what, you know, whatever it was. I was ready. Like I was so stoked after listening to that track i was like if i ever if i was ever the coach of a sports team this is what i would play for them before the you know in the last minute of the fourth quarter like i would i would get everybody on the same page by playing the manipulated mind so so yeah so definitely uh um red cloud uh electric demons and swamp lords there it's vastly different music from each other um some of electric i feel like some of electric demons and red cloud may overlap a little bit it, you know in terms of but but vastly different uh, and then swamp lords is its own unique thing but yeah. uh, I, I would say and i think you'll probably agree with me all three bands are definitely worth listening to definitely yeah so yeah. run don't walk uh, whatever or whatever the the uh, internet equivalent of that is to uh, to put them on your playlist. Yeah. So cool. All right. Well, um, Heather and I uh, will have another episode next w- in a week. This is a weekly show for those of you just turning in for the first time. And then in October, uh, on the twenty second, we'll have our first live stream guestable. Uh, where we have five bands playing from around the world who will all be live streaming uh, to our YouTube channel and Twitter and Facebook and and whatever other social medias we have. But uh, it'll be great. That's going to be really cool. Yeah, yeah. We're we're returning to our roots. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, this was a great show. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I will see you next time. Okay, bye.